Hey guys, uh, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get everything set up and find the right files and uh, programs to perform a firmware update on the Firelight series panel, such as the 9200 and 9600. For this example, um, I'll be detailing my uh, information around the 9600 UDLS with firmware version 6.0 as my uh, firmware update. So first things first, we can go to Firelight's website and I'll post these links in the comments for this video. But uh, once you go to this uh, Firelight's website or support, they have all their software here. Uh, you don't need any special credentials to get in, anyone can download it, so just uh, go to the site and uh, you'll see here there's PS Tools that's used to upload and download the software to the panel. You know, Tyler recommended that you obviously uh, do an upload of your database from the panel be before performing any firmware updates just in case it wipes everything out. Uh, so go ahead and uh, use PS Tools to update your current program in your panel. With that said, uh, as you scroll down here, you'll see software utilities, and then we got panel firmware. And we'll start out with the 9050, 9200 UDLS, and so on. You'll see the different versions here. Like I said, for our video, I'm going to concentrate on the MS9600 UDLS version 6.0. So here's all the files we need right here. You'll see the PPU Wizard 34B1 zip file. That's the actual software for updating the firmware. It spells it out right here in the description. And uh, down here at the bottom is the actual firmware file in this zip folder right here. So you need to download both of these. And if you want, you can click on this uh, PDF right here, which I have open on this tab. And this is just uh, a technical bulletin on how to perform the upgrade. And this is based on the 9600 UDLS, like I stated. So before you do this on a 9200 or any other panel, I highly recommend you download the appropriate technical bulletin for that particular panel. All right. Um, so we're going to go back here. Like I said, you're going to download the PPU Wizard. That's the software. And you're going to download the 9600 LS 60B2 zip file. That's the actual firmware for version 6.0. So now, once you've successfully installed the PPU Wizard on your computer, you're going to open it up and it's going to look like this. It's got a little disclaimer here and everything. Um, it's telling you it takes about 5 to 10 minutes to perform the whole firmware update. And the next screen, it's going to tell you to uh, disconnect power, AC and DC, to your panel. So I usually do that before I get started. So um, just disconnect all the power to the panel. And uh, once you have this open, click Next. Here is where we're going to select the panel that we're working with. And like I stated, we're going to be using the 9600 UDLS for the example. So we'll select 636 point addressable. And the file path is where you actually have the firmware file uh, saved as. You're going to obviously have to extract it out of the zip folder when you download it. And it's going to be a PRO file. I have it on my desktop. So when you hit browse, just like anything else, just go ahead and find it right here on your uh, computer. Open it up and it should show the path right here. And uh, just so you know, I'm not connected to an actual panel for this example. I'm just doing this on a desktop PC, so I'm not going to take you 100% of the way through the process, but this video's intention was basically to show you what files you need and what firmware files and programs and everything and where to get it and a basic description of how the whole process works. So, once you've got this all set up, click Next. It's going to give you a confirmation of your panel model and uh, your version here, date stamp. And uh, once you've confirmed everything there, go ahead and click Next again. And this is where it's going to tell you to remove all power to the panel, AC and DC, obviously. And place switch SW1 on the FACP. It says C manual for switch location. Um, I believe it's right behind the display um, for the panel. But like I said, just check the manual out and make sure you know where the location of it is for each uh, particular panel that you're performing this firmware update on. Go ahead and place that in the down position, and then you're going to connect your programming cable between the FACP's RS-232 and uh, the op an open serial port on your PC, like a DB9. 
And just in case you don't have this cable already, what I've done here, you can pause the video on this uh, shot. But this is, like again, once I said this is for the MS9600 UDLS, so consult the book for other panels that you're going to be doing this update uh, upgrade to. I'm pretty sure it's all the same, but you've got uh, pins 2, 3, 4, and 5, red, white, green, and black on the DB9 uh, connecting to your TB7 here. So, like I said, once again, this is for the 9600. Confirm the wiring for the programming cable on the panel that you are doing the firmware update for. So, once you have your cable connected, switch SW1 in the down position, restore power to the FACP, and the display is going to show waiting for connection. When you're ready, click next. Obviously, like I said, I'm not connected to a panel, so I'm not going to take you much further than this step, but when we hit next, this is where it's going to establish a connection. I'm going to get a timeout. There it is. And this is obviously because I'm not connected to the panel. If I was, the connection would uh, come up. Check the boot version. It would download the firmware to the FACP. And if you consult the document here, the technical bulletin, if you look here at number 12, it says once the download is complete, the FACP will reboot automatically. After it has rebooted, remove the AC power and DC power from the panel once again and put the SW1 switch back into the up position. Disconnect your programming cable and reapply power, the AC power and batteries. Once you've updated time and date settings, the panel will be ready for normal operation. Uh, you'll know it's good when the panel says all normal and you can simply press the reset button to check out what version is currently in the panel and make sure that your firmware update took. So it's pretty much as easy as that. The big key things to remember, like I stated earlier, is to perform an update with PS Tools of your database first before doing any firmware updates just to avoid the possibility of losing your program. And I'm going to put these links in the description. So uh, go ahead and give it a shot. If you have any questions, post it in the comment section. Thanks, and make sure to check out FireAlarmsOnline.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.